present, everyone. Let's get dangerous. This is so cool. I know. It feels so right. With James E. Lee. He's opening our minds to new ideas. Kill him. Who is that guy? Your mama. You just made the list. <laughs> oh, wait. You serious? Let me laugh even harder. It's all in football. Sure. We talk about it all the time. Really? No. Burn. What is up, you ducks? It is all in football on FTN. Reminder, we're all under one channel now. So FTN Fantasy, make sure you check that out. And the NFL Draft is coming up, so it's special guest time. And the very first special guest, uh, he actually brought it up to me like before we started the show. And I remember this, like, hearkening back to way, way, way back. I mean, this is pre-pandemic doing mock drafts on the Pat Mayo show. Uh, it is Thor Nystrom. Uh, but were you, were you with Fantasy Pros at that point? I think back no, then, was- no. That was back in my Roto World days. Way yeah. Way back. yeah. <laughs> back when Roto World existed and it wasn't NBC Sports Edge. <laughs> yeah, back in the good old days. Yeah, when they had a full staff and the whole deal. Yeah, it was yeah crazy times. But yeah, good times. Good to be back with you, man. Good to see you. I know. It's been way too long. Make sure everybody, if you're listening and not watching, seeing us have the thousands of you listen these days and nobody watches during the offseason, uh, at ThorKu, that's Thor K-U. Uh, make sure you check them out over there. One of the best... Yep, yep. One of the best in the business when it comes to NFL draft prospects. Uh, but And that's actually kind of teased me into my first conversation here is a lot of times I, I saw you actually watching on CBS yesterday. Uh, everybody's just like, oh, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? And not a lot of people ask you what I think is a very important first question is how do you do your analysis? Is it, I grind film <laughs> and like, you know, like the, the cliche of, oh, I just all watch the tape and all that. Type of stuff. What's your process? And then there's an actual follow-up question, but like, what's your process of like, is it the three years, two years, 18 months? Like, how do you develop your break? Like, cause if you go right now to fantasy pros, like your big players, the big players inside kind of what would be like almost the top 100. If I kind of parried out your names, you have, four or five, six paragraphs, and then it parses down from there. And I don't think it's like you're not giving those guys as much attention. It's just I don't think, you know, there's much to break down as them for the attention in the NFL perspective. So how do you come up with all the explanations you give for these players? Yeah, I mean, as far as like the the full evaluation on these guys, you know, as you know, in the fall, my job is to cover college football. And that goes back to the Roto World days going back, you know, a decade plus, I you know, getting old now. Um, But, you know, that's what we do during the fall. And then in the spring, I get to watch the cut ups and then get deeper into their analytical profiles. And basically what I do is in the spring, I go position by position. So, you know, we'll start the quarterbacks or whatever and running backs. And then you go through and then you're you know, I bring into that this exposure that I have to the guys from their recruiting process through their playing careers whatever exposure I had from them live, you know, over their career. And then, you know, I will watch their cutups and and their analytical profiles. And then you're comparing them apples to apples against, you know, the other dudes that end up being at the top, you know, 30, 40, 50 of their position group, 60 and, and 70, 80 in my case, you know, with, with, with my board being a little bit bigger, but, uh, um, yeah, that that's how it ends up going. And, and you're just sort of parsing at the margins when you get a little bit deeper there, you know, but um, at, at the top. Yeah. But, you know, as far as the write ups go, that's what what people they, they, they want to read about Marvin Harrison Jr. Malik neighbors and maybe not uh, Ryan Florinoy quite as quite as much. <laughs> but uh, they're all beautiful flowers and snowflakes to me. All right. So the follow-up question to that is, this one's interesting. So for a lot of people out there uh, who know my stuff at The Athletic, but uh, if you have come from Thor's side of this and you're coming to just discover maze, I like watched a player and then I'm like, what is the output going to be? Now, and a lot of times the player might not parse up again, like exactly like, like, oh, he's 6'2", 200 pounds, runs blank. This is why he's the same kind of player. I'm like, he's going to do this in the NFL who's a player who's very similar. And a lot of times there's body skill sets that are typed and everything like that. But I'll give you a perfect example right off the top. You brought up Marvin Harrison. I've seen a lot of comps from Marvin Harrison. My immediate thought watching and watching and watching, and I'm like, you know what? I think this ends up translating to in the NFL. And there are some similarities, but it's not exactly a one-for-one that I've seen anybody compare. I think he's going to produce like DJ Moore. 
And a lot of people are like, well, I don't see the connection to DJ Moore. I'm like, well, I'm talking about production. So when you come up with your comps, and we're actually going to talk about them today because we like lockstep in like three or four guys. Um, how do you come up with your comps? Do you like sit there and envision and like be like, man, this looks like the player I knew? Because there's some you're pulling back from like 10, 12 years ago. I'm like legit like, man, I forgot about that, dude. Like, so like, how do you come up with your comps? I, I appreciate this question because when I so when I was like a kid, the thing I loved the most was like the player comps, right? Like, you know, when when I get the draft magazines and different stuff like that. So when I got this job, I, I wanted to blow that out. Uh, and so that's why when I do the 500 player big board, I have 500 comps on it. Um, and and I'm really nuts. <laughs> I'm really. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. And, and I'm really obsessive with with that process. I you know, I, it's one of the first things I start with. So with some guys, I will go through seven, eight, nine, ten comps during the process. I'll just keep swapping them out until I, I find one that I like. For me, it's the the first thing is it's got to be similar size and athleticism, because if if it's not, you're you're already starting out. And if it's the wrong package, I feel like you're given the the wrong idea right from the get. From there, you can. Um, I, the other thing that I try to keep in mind is giving the, how do I say this? I, I try to keep in mind that most of the audience, it probably has not seen these guys or at least not nearly as much of them as for instance, I have. And especially when you get further down the board, I can't expect that, that the, the average person reading is, as watch Xavier Leggett play a bunch of football games or as watch Jacob Cowing play a bunch of games. And so yeah. all, all my job is, is to try to put a totem in, in their head of like, you know, this person. So, so that's who it is. And so the other thing I'm trying to do is based on where I rank them, how I see the prospects career playing out. I'm also trying to pick a dude whose career sort of played out like that. So it's like size, athletic profile, the careers were similar ish and and if the play style i'm also trying to jive that so those are like the four sort of factors you can't always get all four exactly right but that's what i'm going for okay well then let's start and we're going to talk quarterbacks and wide receivers today and we have to talk about the most important quarterback in the draft not Caleb Williams. <laughs> we have to talk about your boy. We're going to talk Caleb Williams, but I want to talk your boy because probably Nah, I, I was going to say definitively the most contentious name in this draft, probably one of the most in the past decade. Uh, you have love them. You have hate them. You have somewhere in the middle of the ground, which is where I feel I fall. Uh, you are definitely on the love side. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, it doesn't follow Thor. <laughs> he is a big fan of JJ McCarthy. Like there's no question about it. Uh, for my breakdown, this will kind of give you why I fall in the middle. I said I could see him being Trevor Lawrence in the NFL, and this is my bad side, and he kind of gives me reminders of at times, is I'm worried he could be Jake Locker. Uh, you don't seem to have any concerns. Uh, tell me, and tell everybody out there, like, why you believe. And again, uh, I kind of, I messaged Thor and I said this. This, this isn't going to be like, ha, Thor's right, ha, I'm right, ha, this is like, this is NFL. Like, if the NFL can't get prospects right at more than like a 50% hit rate, what do you think we're going to do? Like, maybe we can do a better job than some of the GMs out there. But the point being is like, this isn't going to be like a ha, got you show. I don't want to be like, oh, you know, look five years from now, Thor, you remember when you were on my show and I told you he was going to stink? No, I just want to know, what do you see in him? Because a lot of people who, like you said, might not have even watched Michigan football outside of the championship game don't know like you get the arguments well why didn't they ever ask him to pass and then you have the flip side of well like well when he did you saw all the quality there so for somebody who's in the middle ground how would you argue to me to like pull you more towards your side yeah well first off you know you 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 do this every year and, and you rank out 500 guys you have to it, you're basically making 500 predictions on outcomes that haven't occurred right. yet and and you know like you mentioned even the nfl is not good at at predicting those outcomes based on on the you know the the odds that the, the guys hit after they draft them so yeah i i missed over and over again on on mine so yeah i mean it just comes with the territory as far as that goes um as as far as McCarthy goes, Jake, what was the exact question again? <laughs> Just the, the nuance of it. 
the, the new also yeah i know i kind of did what you're not supposed to do in this industry is like load this entire entire question with an explanation at the beginning <laughs> so basically i said you're on the very positive side i'm in the middle of ground i I, yeah. I think i think the jake locker outcome is just as likely as trevor lawrence and trevor lawrence production again i'm doing exactly what you said not to do jj mccarthy and trevor lawrence aren't the same quarterback i just said the numbers I, and i actually can see that i can actually see him putting up the passing numbers that lawrence does with 400 rushing yards and everything like that but i still get that nagging feeling in the back of my mind of that i saw similarities with jay i actually hated jake locker when he came out sorry jake locker um feeling that is like i think that's just as likely an outcome so on the positive side like why should that not be as much as a concern i guess is the best way to put it for me like why should i say you know what jake locker really can't happen mccarthy is much better than that yeah, I, I do think the floor is is higher than that. And and that was part of, the, you know, been my argument, um, you know, going back to, you know, January with him is that the floor was way higher than was being depicted. And, and I think that the ceiling is as well. Uh, I, I could see the locker one as like, a, a you know, sort of the nightmare scenario being tossed out. Um, the the I. Uh, the the I, I like um, Jake Plummer, I would say, like for a, a lowerish uh, outcome one. Uh, Alex Smith is, you know, on on I, I don't want to say lower outcome, but like on on that sort of an end. Alex, my yeah. my comp for him is is Rich Gannon. Uh, the and then my bonanza comp for him is is John Elway. Uh, which I, I probably shouldn't even toss out, but that, that is what my opinion is, but that, that's pie and that that's everything hits, right? Like every prospect, right. it's like, if everything goes right, right landing spot, you know, hits the ceiling. But, but to your point, like, what, why is it not like, why is that nightmare scenario? Not, not in play. What, what are the differences for instance, between he and he and Jake Locker? Well, I'm pretty sure he's not Jake Locker because, for instance, we just saw him win the national title as a, as a 20 year old, uh, true junior for an NFL head coach who sitting NFL head coach who believes that he is the best player in this draft. During that season, he was running an NFL system, NFL concepts, and licking the best defenses that any of these top quarterbacks played down the stretch, uh, one after the other uh, uh, Penn State, Ohio State, Iowa, Alabama, et cetera. Michigan last year played in the aggregate the 38th average defensive strength, which was by far of the top six quarterbacks, the best uh, defensive strength. And down the stretch is where you really saw McCarthy take off. And that was against all those those awesome defenses, um, de you know, during their, their college football playoff run to get into the Big Ten title game and then into that college football playoff run and to win that national title. Jake Locker, I remember Locker at Washington, and and I I understand in terms of the uh, body type and the arm strength, and then the throwing on the run thing. I I totally see where where you're going with that with Locker. The one big difference though was while well, Lock, Locker had that big arm and was it was super athletic, his accuracy was super erratic, yeah. super duper erratic. Um. That was the one thing where, like, during his process, it was like, is that fixable? It was a thing, like, talked about the whole time. It's like, oh, if they can just fix the fix that, if they can fix that mechanical thing. But it was like, that was like a big if, right? Like, right. And, and in hindsight, it should have been, that should have been the, the entire thing that led the dance as opposed to talking about all, all the different tools. Whereas, with like, JJ doesn't have a problem with accuracy. Like, last year, it was 70 2.5%, I think, uh, completion percentage against that nasty defensive strength that they played. And people will say the thing about, oh, they, they didn't they didn't trust them. BS, they didn't trust them. They wouldn't <laughs> beat Alabama and send Nick Saban into retirement to reach the national title game, which they won without J.J. McCarthy. McCarthy was the one that roared them back in the second half of that game and made some plays that I'm not sure that any other college quarterback could have physically made. For instance, the one where they threw it back to him, he catches the ball with one hand, pirouettes around as he's about to get blasted in the chin, throws the ball downfield to Roman Wilson and, com and completes the pass, was 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 one of them. Um, but yeah, like, um, yeah, I, 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 so I, I think the, the floor is higher than that. I also, one other point about this is, is I think he is 
I think he's more able to play right away than people are thinking. Um, I think the guy in the top four that you probably want to sit right away is Drake May. Uh, <laughs> I, like, I, I love Drake May's arm uh, as much as anyone. Like, the, the guy's got a howitzer. Um, the, you know, uh, I, I see what everyone else is seeing with that. Uh, but but Drake May started less games in college than J.J. McCarthy. He did not run the same kind of NFL concepts that J.J. McCarthy did, and I don't see the same kind of NFL skill sets and the same kind of decision-making that translates immediately to the NFL like I do with McCarthy. I think McCarthy will at least be able to get you by next year. I don't think he's going to make the mistakes um, if you toss him in right away that that Drake Maywood um after the bowling green lash game last year JJ McCarthy threw one interception that was in the last the 12 games during that gauntlet uh only th- threw one interception against all those nasty defenses uh while they won the national title so yeah I I just think he's more ready than people think and I I, I, I think the risk profile is is lower there. I, I, I could see uh nitpicking about the the ceiling potentially, but yeah, you also have to give him the, the credit that he has all those tools. Yeah, and, and for everybody out there, so a little bit different is I used to pre draft rank uh somebody and I'm not taking away from like what Thor does, amazing, uh and all that. But I, I hit tears now just because I'm like the floor ceiling kind of like is how I break these guys apart. And because, as you know, you know, landing spot. I mean, forget the fact of opportunity. I mean, some of these teams get ruined by the usage of the coaching. Like, like, let's be clear about yes. that. So it could go, it could go any way, which way. And so for everybody out there, real quick, like I have Daniels, May, McCarthy, Penix, and Rattler all in tier two. That might be a little bit bigger than most people. Um, there's going to come back to that last name in a second. But before we get to that, I want to go all the way back up to Caleb Williams. Uh, as my camera got really dark for some reason, I have no idea why. But uh, Caleb Williams is not necessarily the breakdown that people might expect that I'm asking for you because we don't need to talk about Caleb Williams. He's number one on everybody's board at quarterback. There's no question about that. My question is actually for fantasy specifically only because of what Stroud, as I wear a Texans hat, as Stroud just did. If we're only talking fantasy, is there a potential trap where Caleb Williams gets drafted as a top 10, top 12 quarterback in fantasy, and there's more concern for Caleb Williams than there should be because building off what Stroud just did and because Caleb Williams is, as people will throw out, generational prospect and quotes and all that type of stuff. So if we're only talking fantasy, would you be hesitant on Caleb because of the excitement coming off of Stroud's rookie season? No, not necessarily. Um, and and there are nitpicks that I have about Caleb's on field game. Well, really, only uh, one that flowers off of another. But uh, the the thing about his fantasy translation that I really like, and fantasy players should get really excited about, he's effing awesome in the red zone. Like really, really good. And not only that, uh, Jake, like you, ever, everyone's seen Caleb, you know, and, and all the USC games are plastered all over the place. It, everyone knows that he loves to scramble around just on the regular plays. But in the in the red zone, and, and the closer you get to the end zone, um, this is where it gets exciting for the fantasy guys because he'll do sort of the same thing. But if you're within five yards of the end zone, Instead of uh, like you know it, when it when it's when it's more like midfield, you're, you're further back. He's going to uh, extend, extend, extend. When you're within five yards, ago, he's just running it in. It's why that his touchdown number run numbers at in college were so elevated compared to the rest of his rushing total or the re, you know the, the aggregate uh, running total. So right. I I absolutely believe that that will continue in the NFL because. It, it those aren't design concepts. That is something that is flowering off of his passing game. That is a natural part of it. He does not like to be in the pocket. He likes to drift outside of it uh, and, and extend those plays and then be looking for those guys. He's going to do the same thing in the red zone, get outside the hashes there, be looking for guys. Not there. I'm just running right in. So that's what my, that my comp, I said, Josh Allen, that's, that's where Love I it. went with the. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I was going with that. All right. So Jaden Daniels, very simple. I said he's the best of Justin Fields, the worst of Justin Fields. Is that fair? Interesting. I I would go up up Fields. Yeah, I, I would. So my comp for him, speaking of the blast for the past, is Randall Cunningham. I saw it. <laughs> I saw oh it. yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, I 
it, the worst of it, I could I could see that aspect for sure. Like if if he busts, I I think that there will be we're gonna draw parallels there. Um, you know, going back to like the awesome collegiate situation, and then like why didn't we see it coming? And it was all staring you in the face and the elevated sack rate, not you know, and all that sort of different stuff. Um, but yeah, like I it it's with with Jaden, I I think the floor is higher there because of those two superpowers that he brings into the NFL, the downfield throwing touch, which is really, really good. He even had that at Arizona state. He didn't have the rest of the, of the passing. People repertoire. don't remember Arizona state. They don't, oh, he doesn't bad. exist. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, well, yeah, the, him and his agents have, have burned the tape, uh, especially <laughs> of, uh, what was it? 20, 2021. It, it was, it, I, I, I shouldn't be mean to him. Like in uh, the first two seasons for a true freshman and a true sophomore, that's, you know, you're just stepping in, you're the face of the program. That's what he was recruited to be by Kerm Edwards and Antonio Pierce was, was another one of those guys who was bringing him in current sitting NFL head coach, speaking of those, but like the first two years for, for what he was being so young, he wasn't bad. It was that third year where everything went to crap. It was also going to crap around him, but I distinctly, speaking of my Roto World job, I used to have to write all the blurbs and what, so like, but including during the games on Saturday. So I'd be watching the games and then writing the game blurbs. And I remember a, a game in that season where I was assigned, it was Arizona State against, in my memory, it was Stanford. I I, I would have to go back and, and confirm on the box score. It was one of the worst collegiate throwing performances i have ever seen i uh, i need to go back in road world and see in the archives if they still have my blurb from that game it made my eyes bleed how bad passing uh Jaden daniels was but he the, the improvement since then has obviously been incredible and he got out of that quagmire situation at arizona state at the end which was rats fleeing a ship because there was a huge scandal there and herm edwards got fired Everyone transferred. Uh, they went everywhere around the nation. Like Ricky Pearsall went to uh, Florida. Uh, Ladarius Henderson went to the national champs, Michigan. Uh, I, I could go on and on. They, they, uh, uh, Johnny Wilson went to Florida State. Like they, they, their team was absolutely stacked. And they, they went all over the place. But uh, Daniels, the, the thing that Brian Kelly worked on him so much with the last couple of years, it was the, the game slowing down, reading the defenses, going through the progressions, those different things. And he improved so much at that, which allowed the natural ability to play up. So you have the, that downfield touch, which he always had, but now it's playing up because you have, you're making the correct decisions. Number one, you're denoting the pass rush. He has that pocket presence manipulating the pocket. So now he actually has space to step up when he wants to throw. Right. And then he does the thing. He's like waiting, waiting, waiting. He has a platform. He'll go through the progressions, wait till the last possible second and then when it is not there, tucking it, I'm gone. And that's when he shoots and he's he's out in a blank and it's hits the accelerator and, and we're gone. Only slight nitpick I have about him is when he pulls that ball down, he, he talks, he runs every single time. I yeah, like, he's, he's not pulling back out of it. No, yeah. like and his, his NFL coaches for sure are gonna tell him, like, Jaden, like you you have to start, you know, at least give them a look where you're gonna scramble to buy some more time and then throw because yeah, the, the defense that that's going to be on scouting reports where if you talk, you're going to run. Yeah. So, all right. The last one. And I, I just want to hit on this real quick is uh, Spencer Rattler. So for my comp and not just because of what happened in the NFL, but I actually saw some Geno Smith and also again, mm -hmm. Remember, somebody like had some hope, went through some struggles, came back around late. Uh, I think people are forgetting like the Rattler excitement from three years ago. Yes. And there's been some real marked improvement from last year and not quite to the Daniels level. But is there enough that like, hey, I think there's some hope still left for him. Uh, actually, I even said if I could combine two players, I'd make him Geno Tannehill. Like, I think that's like, he's got some oh. of both. Like, you like some Geno yeah. Tannehill? You like, you like that for Spencer Rattler? <laughs> I, I <do>. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like the mashups. I always like that. 
do you think he's worthy of our attention again? And of course, you know, NFL draft wise, you know, if he falls like a Ritter into like the fourth, fifth round, that's going to tell us what we know about the NFL, like what would happen with Sam Howell. Like, you know, maybe there's a hope somewhere, but it's going to be slim. But what is your thoughts on Rattler's late career, college career turnaround where there's some hope again from what was supposed to be, don't forget, guaranteed top 10 pick at the sophomore season? Dude, after that sophomore, or so the redshirt freshman season, but yeah, true stuff. After a second year on yeah, campus, right, right, that right, first right. year he starts for Lincoln Riley, the, he becomes the first dude that Lincoln had ever taken out of high school to start for him. You know, is the the transfers before that, that that Lincoln was starting. He was in the two early mock drafts. You know, those extra side we do every summer. He was number the number one pick in like all those different things. You know, for for that class and. And then obviously the thing went the way that it did. And then Caleb stole his job. And then he and Lincoln left. And then and then Spencer went about his way and on this journey. And you know, my whole thing about Spencer Rattler, I dude, I totally agree with you. That first year, he was really, really, really good at Oklahoma. And he was a five-star recruit coming in. Everyone in the country wanted him coming out of Arizona. And you saw all that ability in that first season when he was in an advantageous situation, yes, but he was super duper young as well, right? Um, the the thing about his game, it reminds me of the prerogative of it. I'm not making like a a, a, a but like the the way he plays. It's it's similar to um, Bryce Young from last process, where he's the smaller pocket passer who likes to get it in shotgun with the field spread. And sort of like Caleb, where he likes to um, stay behind the, the line of scrimmage, but by the time and then um, uh, allow the receivers, their, their, their routes to flower out. Like he, Spencer Rattler does not want to do the, the short stuff right away, the pre-delineated reads. He wants to allow the receivers to go out there and then make the decision with the bullets firing. And he is willing to buy time. And he is also willing to look down that gun barrel to – to an admirable degree to do it. Now, this was the problem with him going to South Carolina. I think South Carolina was a good stylistic fit for him in terms of it was a home after what happened at Oklahoma. That was a bad situation for Rattler. I, I still distinctly remember the week that Spencer Rattler got benched in Norman. Uh, Lincoln Riley refused to let the media go to practices. And so the way it got reported was on the student newspaper building on the roof, you could climb up. And that's how they got a vantage point to see what quarterback <laughs> was taking QB1 reps at the start of practice on like the, the Wednesday practice of practice week that week leading up to game week. And it was Caleb Williams. And so the student newspaper broke that, that story. And Spencer Rattler, this kid who was like the five-star, you know, yada, yada, and had been really, really good the year before, his confidence was shattered. But he goes to South Carolina. Here was here was the – and they had a great coaching staff. Everyone is excited for him. It's the SEC, yada, yada. But the huge problem with it was South Carolina's offensive line the last two years was as rancid as you will see at the Power Five level. It was really a, a low, a mid to low level G five caliber offensive line. Qualitatively, if, if you don't believe me, check the out Giants. Me. The Giants in the NFL. It was the Giants. It was the It was the little <laughs> Giants, is what it was. <laughs> was this- <laughs> they were outside hundred uh, tenth both seasons in PFF passing grade. The issue, uh, pass blocking grade. I'm sorry. The issue with this is in conjunction with Rattler's game. Again, he likes to scramble around, doesn't want to throw the, the, the ball right away, likes to buy the time. You can't do that when there is immediate pressure after the snap every single time. There was an extreme, and, and you remember this, Jake, right at the beginning of 2022, an extremely rocky acclimation process where everyone is like, oh, Spencer Rattler's broken. The first 10 games of 2022, Fine. he was not good. Um, but the last three, four games, Clemson, Tennessee, Notre Dame, he lit them all up. He finally started to figure it out. And then there were some modulations as well with the offense that, that they did to help him out. A little bit more quick passes. Um, but Rattler also modified his game. He realized, I can't do that high wire act every single time when I'm playing behind the world's worst offensive line. It is not going to work. So, so modulated the game and then, you know, again, plays way up at the end of the season, 
played better this season doing that, even though he didn't have any help this year. Jaheim Bell left him. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd left. Like all of his – Marshawn Lloyd left him. Um, uh, you know, a couple other dudes left him as well. Basically, all he had left – was like it was Leggett and Leggett the four years before that had been a special teamer. Like, yeah. and that was all that, that Rattler had to throw to this year, but, but he may do, you know, and, and, and this year actually improved from the, the season before, but it was, it was more of the quick passes. I liked that he got to show that we hadn't gotten to see that before. We hadn't gotten to see him modify his game before uh, he was bullheaded up at the start of 2022. That is why he struggled. But, but Jake, you have both, to your point before, you have both that potentially special sauce of his work under pressure, his work outside the pocket. I love that stuff. Uh, the throwing off platform, the, the creating stuff. That's the stuff we were all talking about after that redshirt freshman season. He potentially retains all that stuff. We didn't get to see as much of it behind that seven offensive line he played with at South Carolina. But he also has showed this other aspect of his game the past couple of years where he also showed he was more humble these past couple of years, but a more measured on field play. Uh, and then to the, to the last point, talk to him down in mobile. And, and that's a kid. I had watched that QB one show or whatever. What, what's that called on Netflix? That Netflix. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, speaking of distinctly rem remembering something, <laughs> I had the worst taste in my mouth about that kid coming into college. Cause I remember this interaction where he was berating this backup quarterback who I'm pretty sure if my memory's right, it, it was this Canadian kid named Christian Velo, who, funny enough, just entered the transfer portal yesterday. He he was <laughs> he was at Pitt, but but he actually he uh, he Rattler. Uh, I, I don't know why this sticks in my mind, but he said something like, uh, "You're not even as good as Jack Miller," you know. And he but he just went on this whole rant. He's berating. I mean, you just act like an a hole the entire time during this show. So when I went to to talk to him at the Senior Bowl. That's sort of the Spencer Rattler you think you're going to get this entitled, you know what? Yeah, couldn't couldn't have been more opposite. He might have been the most like the like the nicest, most generous like dude with his time. I, I'll give you one anecdote. There was a reporter that that uh, wanted to talk to him, but then um, there was another opportunity for this reporter to go and talk to someone else. Rattler saw this. There was a, like in these scrums, there's like a line, you know, to to yeah. talk whatever. Yeah. Rattler gets done with the one-on-one -on -one that he's doing. And as opposed to just mindlessly going to the next one, Rattler walks across the room to find this person and taps on the shoulder and said, Hey, do you, do you want to go next? And, and the person, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm uh, why, like, are you gonna, why are you going to make me like Rattler even more now? Like, what are you now? <laughs> like I, it's stuff like that where I was like, wow, this kid, it's like it, the, 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 the humility thing and, and everything like, and genuine and everything like that. And like I said, he retains that snappy arm in the pocket in the gumption. He attacks the NFL money zones is the last thing that I'll say about his game. I really like the over the middle uh, in, in between the hashes. Not every quarterback in this class does this cough, cough, uh, Michael Penix, cough, cough, Jaden <laughs> Daniel. Some of those guys are going to have to be taught that Rattler's one of those guys who will attack that NFL money zone. Uh, that, that is true. I like the little cough cost there, which, by the way, again, you can check out all the breakdowns for the players that we don't get to uh, over at Fantasy Pros. Uh, a lot more in depth in my one and a half, two sentences and then player comp for me because I, I bullet point it. I don't go that far. I leave people. It's like I even say at the top, it's like you've read Thor stuff. You've read <laughs> Dane stuff. You're like, I don't need you don't need the 15th breakdown of these players. Uh, so. Let's talk a little bit of wide receiver, and I was going to start at the top with one of the tier one wide receivers, but because Jiggles, a uh, fan of the show, uh, actually loves my uh, player comps when I smash people together, I had one other smash Same together. <laughs> see, there you go. Uh, let's see if I let's see if I could get you to guess the wide receiver. I called him Deontay Lockett. Who, who, like what? And that's a good wide receiver, probably top six, seven on most boards. Deontay Lockett. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I think is, <laughs> is McConkey. Yep, that's <laughs> McConkey. There Let's you go. go. Look at this. This is why it's so good. It's at a it. great game so, show. Uh, you like that? Maybe I should yeah. do that more often. Like player comp. Who do you think it is? <laughs> like, I look at the other way around. Yeah. Um, McConkey, as you know, 
this off season has basically been like this roller coaster wise. Like the hype following is just like, oh, underrated. You have no idea how good he could be. And then it was like, well, like the testing, like maybe we need to consider that. And then back up again, but like watch him actually on the field in like pro day. And then it's like back day. Like, and it's been very much like this the off season. I have him strong in my tier two. I have him there with like Adonai Mitchell, uh, Brian Thomas, same tier. Um, you have him pretty high as well. What do you think the most likely outcome? Actually, you know what? I'm going to put this on you. I'm going to, I'm going to phrase it differently now. Likelihood, if you had to put money on it, that he actually gets drafted in the first round. And then, of course, because first round wide receivers, their hit rate in the NFL, hell, is 50%. The likelihood in fantasy, we're already talking about him as a top 40 wide receiver as a rookie. For me, it's it's pretty dang close to a you said 50 percent i'd be right around there uh for mcconkey maybe even with the bills now they're gonna take a receiver uh, maybe <laughs> we maybe go to 55 i'm not saying the bills but it's another team that needs one uh maybe we'll even say 55 can i pause with that real quick yeah yeah, I, I want to like just as a sidebar, like this totally out of the blue, and I know we're taking some of the time, but real quick, I said like so last week when I was doing the show with Meanie, I said I don't think the Bills are in play for like a Troy Franklin type because I think of what you did with Josh Allen to make him successful, you're not looking for somebody else who's going to go downfield forty yards at a time. That's why you got let Gabe Davis walk. So are you with me on this that like McConkey makes a lot more sense than some of the people mocking like Mitchell or not actually Mitchell wouldn't be too bad, but like more of like the Troy Franklin like go downfield and get it type. Does that that makes sense to you like as a complete sidebar yeah for sure yeah um yeah and, like not and, like not xavier worthy not troy flank and more like a mcconkey more like uh, even brian thomas if he happens to fall to there like i think would make more sense yeah I, well and and i think you're hitting on it there where it's gonna be bpa for them because what their receiving car looks like right now i i think you just who, whoever it is right like who's the top <laughs> dude on your board but but to your point i you know, also, you're not stuck to, oh, it has to be this type. I, right. y- you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think it's it's that kind of a thing. I, It's not like uh, Josh Allen is like this caveman that can only, you know, all he can do. It's like the, uh, remember in Game of Thrones with the giant and all, the, they threw their big rocks right, so they can only awesome. throw. It's not like he's that, right? Like, I mean, he can. <laughs> <laughs> Khalil Shakir, he got some balls too. Like he, he, he can throw it to the smart dudes as well. But I totally agree with you as far as McConkey goes. And by the way, one point I'd, I'd make vis-a-vis this that I think the mistake that people make about Lad McConkey, Lad McConkey can play on the outside. In fact, he uh, he did for I think roughly seventy eight percent of his career snaps at Georgia. Georgia, a team that does not really play with slot receivers in their system. It's yep. a twelve personnel system very much like, for instance, Michigan's. Um, so he played on, on the outside a lot. He did get uh, some, uh, you know, slot the 23, 24, whatever the, whatever the difference was. But I, I, it's too early in the morning for my match, Jake. But, you know, it, and of course, <laughs> he, would be, he would be good at that stuff in the, in the slot. But I, I think, you know, just uh, negating the outside stuff is a mistake. My comp for Lad McConkey is Jordan Addison, a guy that I got to watch uh, plenty of in college, but then uh, way more of last year coming to you live from Minneapolis right now. Uh, and it's a well. Very- speaking of your Vikings, yeah. yeah. And and for everybody out there, what I'm about to say is I don't think McConkey is going to be this good. But like, like just speaking of your Vikings, what was the complaint about Justin Jefferson in college? Remember that can't play outside. Well, only- yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So I was just saying, like, you know, it's, you don't, that's the thing is, like, you don't have to win outside with strength. Yes, McConkey can struggle with handsy corners and, like, powerful ones that, like, want to jam him up, but he can get away from him with his skill set. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, I just, like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I hate that people get kind of caught up in that. Um, like, they, they, like, they don't see it and they're like, well, it's just not going to happen in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, he's not the dude that you put right on the line against the the CB1 guy. You're going to have to play him off yeah. the line. You might have to motion him sometimes. Like, y- yeah, you have to keep him off the – if if the other team has a freak press corner that, that's right up there, that's the dude that you keep him away. Luckily, there's things you could do to do that. You have formations. <laughs> you could do pre-snap motion. Like, get out of here. It's not – you know, like – but when people do that, it's like, you, you know, you try to negate a prospect by just – narrowly being myopic on the the only the stuff they can't do um but yeah like with with McCon- i'm you know just speaking to the outside utility 
the the guy can get off the line as as long as it's not like a situation like that. You you might have to modify the path a little bit in that scenario, but you know, outside of that, he's going to be fine. Some get the releases in college regularly, and the the thing that is special about him it's the separation. Um, I, I I wrote about this in my uh, receiver ranking piece. It's up on Fantasy Pros right now. But it, in at the Senior Bowl, he was the easily the most impressive guy that I saw there this year. And it evoked for me watching Tank Dell there last year of this very unique thing that unique to all-star games where in the one-on-one drills, every now and again, maybe once a year um, in, in, in those ones, in the space ones, where you'll see a player change the behavior of every person on the other side. That's what Tank Dell did. He destroyed every defender that he played on Tuesday, practiced against on Tuesday in the one-on-one drills and literally embarrassed them in Mobile. And then on the Wednesday, the people started tugging his jersey every time coming out of route breaks because they were sick of getting embarrassed in front of the NFL evaluators. And with Lad McConkey, what it was the same thing on Tuesday. He annihilated everybody. Everybody got annihilated by Lad McConkey on Tuesday. On Wednesday, the next day of practice. No defensive back, want, and this goes back to the point of depressing him off the line. Nobody wanted to get anywhere near Lad McConkey off the snap anymore. They were all playing seven, eight yards off of him and freely seeding the, the free completions. The, the issue with him, you are playing with fire if you want to play him off the line. He is so sudden and so fluid with the movement. I almost had to see it up close to believe it. Because watching on TV, you see him get the separation and you see the regularity with which they throw it to him and it is converted into a completion. The uh, percentage on that is ridiculous. It's over 80% of the time a ball left the quarterback's hand in Lad McConkey's direction. It was a completion. Just, just period. Every time you know left the quarterback's hand, it, it was it was converted into a completion by him. But the 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 ability of him to separate because of that, he understands how to run a route. Yes, but he also has this very sort of kinetic, natural moving style, and he's way way more athletic than people at least previous to the NFL Combine were giving him credit for. He has that agility. He has that fluidness, and then of course, to the speaking to the outside thing. He also proved that he has high four threes wheels, which which he also had proven coming out of high school. It was a little bit higher than that when he was coming out of the cans, but I, I think he was like high four fours coming out of there. But but that kid's got juice. He can get downtown and create separation at absolute will. All right, so then we'll hit a quick uh, few before I get you out of here because I want to keep you all day long. But I'm going to – because we're going to turn around. We're going to do what you say because it's the fun game. We'll see if you can figure out the player when I say – the comp that I all came right. up with this is like, and I actually like your comp for this player as well, which kind of ties into what, so I called him bigger Garrett Wilson, which obviously is pretty lofty praise. Bigger Garrett Wilson. Um, <laughs> I, love, I actually the, like the, this the, game. The, this, this guy's got to be very, very high up on the board. Yes. Are, yes. are we going, uh, um, wait, is, is this, is this neighbors? No. The other one. <laughs> Harrison? Nope. Oh, Third one, I should say. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you no, said Devontae Harrison... Adams, which I think yeah. is I think Devontae yeah, yeah, Adams yeah. is bigger Garrett Wilson. <laughs> no, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you already uh, gave your... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. How about, like, I just... This is more fun than I was originally going to do. All right, how about I call them good Kenny Galladay his best day, bad Kenny Galladay on his worst day? Oh, I know. This, that, that's Keon Coleman. Okay, there you go. Yeah, Let's yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> simple enough yeah. uh here's one and this is actually this this is going to give you a hint because we're a little bit different on this one um a little bit of outlier there wasn't a lot of outliers again you rank and i know like tears are going to kind of like cloud it a little bit but here i'll give you that um christian kirk or could be terrible Ger- cedric wilson hmm yeah see that now they're gonna get a little bit tougher a little bit further down He's in, so he's in the tier with Xavier Worthy, McConkey, and others for me. He's a little bit lower for you. That should give you a hint there. The state this, he plays for. Look at my hat. Look at my hat for the state that he played for. Give me the, um, give me the uh, mashup one more time. <laughs> Christian Kirk. Well, actually, on the good side, Christian Kirk. On the bad side, Cedric Wilson. 
Um, so we'll call him Cedric Kirk. Cedric Kirk. <laughs> Cedric Kirk. Um, he played for Texas. There's a giant hit. He played for Texas. Wait, A.D. Metro? Yeah. That, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, man, it, with the, the size, it is what... Like the yeah, size three off. off the, you yeah, gotta I remember, off like I, I, I don't yeah. lock down on the size too much. All right, okay, so okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. A quick version on him. You're a little bit lower than I. Again, kind of nitpicking here yeah, on like not, how much lower yeah. it is. Like, yeah, like uh, so your hesitancy with Mitchell and the NFL is super duper, super duper inconsistent over over his collegiate career. Uh, I do not like the dudes that that loaf. Um, I saw too much of that when I, you know, because when you watch the cut up, cut up, cut up, cut up, um, you, you know, you you see a lot of the similarities with this stuff, but then you it also. Oh, you know, you know with, what you just here here real quick. Sorry yeah. to cut you off. Yeah. You just made me think like like a one there like the loafing, Marquise yeah. Lee. So the one thing I said about Marquise Lee, and I always, no, because I always use him as a good example. I said yeah. if you watch Marquise Lee in college, dominated. But that was yeah. because he was just so much better than everybody Holly, else. Baby. And he gets to NFL and he's trying to do the same thing, which was lazy routes, rounded routes, just kind of like yeah. lazy out there. And like, oh, by the way, everybody's on your level now, buddy. And it took him four years to figure this out. And then unfortunately, his career ended pretty soon after that. But I think maybe like, it, 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 am I just trying to hope a little bit that like it gets, it clicks in his head to stop being lazy with Mitchell? Maybe that's part of it. Um, I mean... <laughs> You know, it, it, it's hard. You know, again, it's, it's, they're like unknowable outcomes, and that that the athletic profile that with with the size and the speed and, and everything like that, it certainly gives hope. And there are the flash reps where it's like insane. I just, I just see him different than than other people. Like, because because that way of seeing him, it's like, you know, it, he's he's a bit risky, but the the ceiling is super high, and he could be you know the wide receiver one. I sort of see him the opposite way where I don't see the ceiling with him because I, I don't, first of all, I don't like the way that he changes directions, even normal, like his usage is heavily slanted towards the, the straight stuff or the slant right. stuff or the, the comeback stuff. You don't see as much of the, you know, uh, outbreaking in breaking, like the precision type stuff like that. And then uh, I, I, <laughs> It's tough for me to project at a guy that that has stuff to work on. You know, it's like, for instance, he could work on the nuance to to improve the uh, the f the footwork efficiency in the rail break to, to you know with, with some of that difference. But how are you going to project the the work with that when when you see him loafing so much on the concepts where it goes the other way? You see him disappear from some of these games. What 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 I see him as a prospect? It's like. Uh, um, I don't know how many baseball fans we have in the the audience, but like, uh, and 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 forgive me because I, I don't I don't fall I'm too my head's too deep in the weeds of this football stuff to follow too closely. So so my my example is going to be from from uh, a long time ago, but like a Dave Kingman, it's like a dude who either hits a <laughs> dinger or else he strikes out, and there's no in between. Um, that, to me, that is what Ad Mitchell is. Certainly, that is what he was last year at Texas on a team that had an NFL-esque passing offense. Texas had one of the best play callers in the nation in Steve Sarkeesian. That is the thing that Steve Sarkeesian is. It's why Nick Saban wanted him and, like, you know, all that different stuff. Uh, Quinn Ewers, inconsistent for sure, but assuredly we will be talking about him at this time next year and, you know, then Xavier Worthy and Jatavian Sanders and even Jordan Whittington and, and, and yada, yada. And in that system – it was, I, I had the stats here, somebody, but it was in seven of the 14 games he was under, it was either 30 or 40 yards, just total non-factor. And right. then most of his counting stats were accrued in three singular games, two of which he went truly ballistic. And then the other, the third one, he poked his head over 100 yards as well. But in those three games, it, it's the same thing you see with them every single time. When, when he is a factor in a game, it's because he has had two or three explosive plays. And when he gets one early, it's like the the, the NBA guy, you know, it's like he hits the early three. You got to get him involved early. He tends to be playing a little bit. You, you get the routes a little bit harder down the field as the game goes on if you get him involved like early on with, with that sort of stuff. But but so what, what I see him as, it's, it's just your regular sort of pop the top wide receiver two where the defense has to respect 
the size and the speed on that side of the field. If you don't, he's going to run by the dude that, that you have out there. Um, on the other, if you single cover him, because AD Mitchell is one of like his, the other thing about him is that the 10 yard, and you can see this with him off the line, his 10 yard split was not good. Um, it's build up speed with him 1000%. Once he gets going though, that's when he gets dangerous. So he needs that, that runway when he gets it though, uh, he, he's, he's okay, well, yeah. Once that happens, so you one, have to keep the safety back. I see him at DJ left. shark is why I see him as. Okay, uh, there's one before we get out of here that I actually think well, some of the things you just said is comparative to what I was thinking and might be why I uh, get the idea of why you're higher than I am on this next player. But before we get to him real quick, these are the easiest one I'll give you so far. I call him Deshaun Jackson. Who am I talking about? Savior Worthy. There you go. <laughs> and then actually <laughs> the one that I put here is that we had a similar comp, but it wasn't the same player. Uh, for I'll, I'll give you the player and see if you can guess him. We didn't have the same one, but... It's a very similar player in who you put. So I put Sterling Shepard for this player. You think you could figure out who he is? He's in the championship game. Oh, so 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 not Malik. Uh, no. Um, did you go? Oh, it, Roman Wilson. No. no um, uh, the other side. Did you you go, called him Golden Tate. Did you go? Uh, uh, did you go Jalen Polk? No, or McMillan. 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 Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, you called him Golden Tate. I was like, call him, I call him Sterling Shepard. I was like, yeah, you know. So, yeah. but Golden Tate was better than Sterling Shepard. All right. So, before we get out here, I'm going to give you the name. Can you guess? He's in my tier 2.5. And like, wide receiver, as everybody knows, is insane this year. So much so that like people in my wide receiver th tier three and tier four in other years would normally be like two and three. Yeah. And it was so much so. Legit. Yeah. yeah. So really there's good. two there's two receivers that I have in 2.5 because I'm just like they're not quite the twos, but they're better than the three. Like I just if I had to rank, they're kind of almost in their own world. One was Leggett. The other one um, I called Darius Slayton. <laughs> like I'm wondering if you can guess this one before we get out of here. The Slayton one I'll say is. I'm gonna see who you compared him to. Wait, would that be? Okay, I I have one. Let, let me just see if. Okay, I'm I'm gonna. I'm, I, my guess for that one is gonna be Burton. No, but I could see oh, that. Okay, okay. Uh, I could actually see. Give me, give me one more. I'll go. Uh, wait, was that was that Franklin? Is that who you did for Franklin? Yeah, give you. Uh, he plays deep in the South. He played for the state where all the crazy people come from. There's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> like. Gators and more. Oh, yeah. Florida man. Yeah. Uh, so Persol is like who, like when you were just saying about oh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the concerns with Mitchell, um, those were kind of some of the, re that's why I have him in 2.5 and not quite in two is like, I said, Darius oh, Slayton is like, yeah. like I can kind of see okay. like the Darius Slayton. So uh, as we get out of here, I already kept you too long. Positively spin Persol. Again, nitpicky, you have him at six. He's in my tier 2.5, which, by the way, that makes there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wide receivers in front of him. So if I had to be like, he'd be 10 or 11. We're talking four or five spots here. So, real quick, we get out of here. Persol, a little argument of like why maybe I should pull him up or what you see a little bit better than my concerns at the Darius Slate level. Yeah, I mean, objectively, you watch him, and we got to watch a lot of him because obviously experienced, you know, at the highest level for, for years and years. Very good route runner. Everyone agrees with that. And maybe mm -hmm. the dumbest hands we've seen come in, and like in a while, like the highlight reel catches for sure are stupid. I anyone out there that has not seen his catch against Charlotte, uh, put this show on pause or, or, pull, or pull up another tab and Google Ricky Pierce Hall catch against Charlotte. Um, do yourself a favor. Uh, it's it's a real treat. It's like a matrix kind of a catch. Um, yeah. But like you have the routes, you have the uh, hands. And then he what he did during the pre-draft process was prove the athletic profile. That was the really surprise. Like he had some really dumb, uh, speaking of dumb tests, he, the 42 and a half inch vertical. Like I, I was a fan of Ricky Pierce, but but he blew my doors off with the 99th percentile size adjusted athletic profile that he put up. Um, to your to the question about like what for me mitigates um, my concern about the profile, the last three years 
he's been the wide receiver one for Jaden Daniels going back to the 2021 Arizona State uh, rats fleeing the ship team that I was talking about, where it was <laughs> Herm Edwards was going down with the ship. And and so he was Pierce Hall's wide receiver one for that team. Next year it was wide receiver one for Anthony Richardson at Florida. And then last year for Graham Mertz uh, at Florida. And and that's impressive, uh, you know, so quickly ingratiating yourself, becoming the wide receiver one for all those guys. But you do have to say that was the year that Daniels was horrific that I was talking about earlier where he stunk as a thrower, uh, where it was making my eyes bleed. And then uh, <laughs> Richardson, his last year in college was – he showed all the tools for sure, but uh, accuracy was not exactly his forte his coming yeah. out. And then Graham Mertz is, uh, for Wisconsin fans and Florida fans watching this, you know where I'm going with this. is It's is not the best. Uh, I will not spend a ton of time next spring breaking down Graham Mertz's game. We'll, we'll put it that <laughs> way. So the, 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 the contextual benefit of the doubt that I would give to uh, Ricky Pearsall that I am not willing to give A.D. Mitchell. A.D. Mitchell, a guy that played with NFL uh, pocket passers the entire time that were, you know, like at the and, – and and playoff teams and contenders the entire time and with really good play callers and all that stuff. Pearsall wasn't in those kind of situations. He was at the top of the – every time his team and the quarterbacks acknowledge you are the wide receiver every single time. But it wasn't quite the situations. I think if Ricky Pearsall had been at in Alabama and played with, uh, you know, a Bryce Young, or he gone to uh, maybe Ohio State's not a great example because their their wide receiver room yeah. is so stacked. But if he had played at one of these the, um, Texas, right? If you swap Ricky Pearsall with Ad Mitchell last year, I'm pretty positive that Ricky Pearsall has better stats than Ad Mitchell. And you can't um, you can't judge these guys on counting stats. I say that all the time this time of the year because they're devoid of, of context when you're trying to uh, project players to the NFL. I see a lot of box score scouts on, on Twitter. You, you have to watch the guys as well and, and everything, and, you know, all the data, but uh, Pierce saw th th those are the contextual things you have to keep in mind with regards to him. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll give actually a very well argument there. So <laughs> this is why if you're not following Thor, you make sure to follow him at Thor Ku at Thor K U. Uh, oh, by the way, you're Jerm Jermaine Burton. If I smashed them together, uh, I didn't have this cause I had both their names in there because I had like the good side and the bad side, but I, we'll, we'll call, we'll call Jermaine Burton. We'll call him Romeo Godwin. So downside and Romeo Dobbs, good side Chris Godwin. So, and that, that just sounds like a cool name, Romeo Godwin. That, that, that's that's uh, that it actually does. Get out that of could here. be yeah, that could be like a uh, yeah, someone in a movie or something. One one yeah. last thing, you know, just because you you brought up Jermaine Burton, uh, very talented kid. Uh, and 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 uh, just hand up on this, I had him higher in my rankings just based on the, the tape and the athletic profile. Uh, I I think he's gonna fall. Uh, based on some some stuff i'm hearing so i just just warning there out there for everyone yeah the um there's there's some concerns about uh the personality people that uh watch uh just one example that was on television uh, a couple years ago they were uh alabama was playing tennessee they lost the field was stormed and jermaine burton was shown on camera appearing two separate times to take swipes at Tennessee fans as he walked off the field. There, there are some concerns there. The, the kid is super talented. So wait, wait, so you know, you, you know what we do? We just pencil him as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Mike Tomlin will get to it. Like, boom, done. Fixed there him. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, remember how Belichick back in the day, like during the, the beginning of the dynasty, it was like you could take one head case per year. It was like yeah. Corey Dillon was one of them. And like, yeah. but it was, it was only, like <laughs> one, you can only one, have one head year. case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but now like, they, they got rid of the head. So, yeah, you got to swap one in. There you go. Burton's yeah. to the Steelers. Lock it in right now. Put your bets out there if you want. It's done. Uh, I'll promote something quick before you get out of here. Besides all, I mean, you're still uh, parsing, you're still working through all your stuff over at Fantasy Pros. Which, if anybody hasn't checked it out, and you want a good read. Uh, go oh, ahead and check I, that out. I, I, I have something good. Uh, I, the, my 500 player big board of 500 comps drops tomorrow on Fantasy Pro, and my favorite thing to That's, publish every single year. It is literally. I was just waiting that. for that. It's, it's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. I just like, cause that's what everybody loves is the comps and everybody hopefully loves Thor. Uh, we'll be back next week. Rich Rebar is joining me again. We're going to do oh, prospects all the way up. Through, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. All the way up through the draft and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a good one, everybody. Yay.